Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am glad to see you and I hope you've had a great week and are gearing up for a fun weekend. I have a new craft for you today. We are going to be making carved scarabs. And I love scarabs, I love scarab beads. If you are my age, you will remember the scarab bracelets. My mom always had one in her jewelry box and it's one thing that I look for when I go to thrift stores. Anyway, I thought, where can I find scarabs? And you know, you can buy them online. There are some places you can, on, you know, Amazon, Etsy, wherever, jewelry suppliers, it's kind of more hard to find them that way. Um, they tend to be a little expensive. The beads, you know, let's make our own, right? So I had this container of cabochons that I got from a jewelry supplier and I buy like the bag fulls, like, you know, 20, 30 bucks for a bag and you don't know what you're gonna get and that's half the fun, right? And I look and I'm like, oh, what can I do with this and this? And it actually is a really good way to get the, you know, the wheels turning and the creative juices flowing because you don't know exactly what you're going to get when you get like a surprise package like that. And it makes me think like, what can I do with these? Anyway, I had this container full. Recently I did a pendant on my YouTube channel, which was like that soldered oval. And I thought, you know what, that could be a scarab. So I got out some of my basic jewelry making tools that you probably have at home. And I thought this would be a great video to share. So let's get started. I'm going to show you, this is the one that I made. I don't know if I can get it in focus really well for you, but uh, we're gonna go through it and I'll teach you step by step. Now I taught myself how to do this. I just kind of figured out what would I need to create this and what tools do I have that I could use. And luckily I had, you know, some things that worked. So uh, we're gonna move on over to the table and I'm gonna show you how we make Egyptian scarabs. All right, so we're going to be making scarabs, and this is one that I made, it's carved. And I'm gonna show you how I did this from start to finish, and I did put some paint in the recessed areas that I carved so you could see it very well. And it actually gives it a pretty cool look. So let's get started. What you're gonna need is a Sharpie marker or another kind of permanent marker. Um, I'm using painter's tape. It's not a necessity, but it helps. I have just a little bit of water in a dish, and that's my recent thrift store find, if you remember that from another video. I have a paper towel. This one's like a damp one, and then I have a dry one, and the only other thing we need is a stone. So I buy these cabochons by the pile, like when you can buy like a whole bag of them um, for cheap, and some are great, some aren't. You have to kind of go through them. And I bagged mine up by size because I just had this whole container just filled with all different ones. And so um, I put like my medium sized ones in a bag and then these are like the really big ones. And then I have some small ones. And what we're gonna do is we're going to engrave it. And I'm gonna use one of these medium sized stones. Uh, the darker stone is better because you're able to see the contrast of the engraving when you're finished. I'm going to make sure I don't use anything like super nice that I want to use in another jewelry project. These are pretty much to play with. So let's see, uh, this one is faceted so we're not going to use that. Uh, we could do a dark one. That might be pretty cool. Or how about another green one? So which one should, should it be? Let's see. Well, I'll keep both of these out. One thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need, need a folded up washcloth or towel to work on because we're going to be using an engraver and I'm using a simple Dremel. Now, this one that I have, I got many years ago. I've only used it a few times. This one is called the Dremel Stylus. I don't know if you can get this model anymore, but um, there are you know a bazillion different kinds of Dremels you can get and they're relatively inexpensive. This one comes with a charging port. So I plug this in and then this kind of fits in here like this. And then that, you know, it charges on there. So it's cordless, which is nice. So when I go to use it, um, you know, to change the tip, you just like press out and you can turn this and you can put different tips on. And I have like a grinding one here or a uh, engraving one. And they have all different kinds that come with, you know, the tool or you can buy separately. They're just a few dollars each. 
So we're gonna be using this, and when we go to engrave our cabochon, we don't wanna do it like directly on the table. We want some kind of something below it that has like a little bit of a give. So that's why I'm gonna be using the towel. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our um, design on our stone. So if you don't know what a scarab is, it's an ancient Egyptian design of a beetle. And just to show you on like a piece of scrap paper, it usually, like there's eyes up there, it'll have a dividing line across that way, horizontally, looking at it this way. And then it usually has one or two lines going this way, and that signifies like those are the wings, right? And sometimes it'll have a second line here. And then sometimes it'll even have like a marking for like the head. Other times it'll, sometimes it'll have just like one line across and then one line down. That's like the most basic. That would be a good one to start with. And then you can get more, you do that way. That's cool. That's actually how I did this one. I just did the one line you know, and then the head and the face. So, all right, let's get started. And I'll turn the volume down when I'm making the video, uh, when I'm using the tool, because it is kind of loud. So I don't want it to startle anybody. But to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to draw our guidelines on our stones, because we don't wanna, like I freehanded those and I did pretty good with it, but that's what the painter's tape is for. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull a piece of this off like that. And let's do this green one here. So I'm gonna first, looking at my image again, I need to do a dividing line across the, you know, maybe it's not exactly across the middle. It's probably like supposed to be two thirds up. So more like this one. So I'm just gonna look at my stone and I'm gonna like estimate where I, estimate where I think that should be. So put it on paper so you can see what I'm doing. Um, maybe about here looks pretty good. And I'm just going to wrap that on there. And then I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and you can get these in different thicknesses. Like you can get a thinner one. My thinner one is dried out. So I have to use my heavier tipped one. And then I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and I'm going to use the edge of the tape right here as like kind of like a guideline. So I'm going to just like really carefully sketch along it and the uh, even though it's a, called a permanent marker you know it will come off we're gonna grind through that and whatever doesn't come off you can wash it off with soap and water or dish detergent and if that doesn't work you can use a little bit of nail polish remover with acetone or, or pure acetone and so I'm gonna trace around this carefully I'm taking my time because we want it to look good it's a little awkward to hold Okay, so there's my first line. Okay, I kind of bumped it there, but that's okay. Blow on it a little bit to dry it, and then I'll peel that away. And there's my first guideline. Okay. So now we're gonna do um, a horizontal line this way. And I think I'm actually gonna do two of them. I'm gonna try to do two of them. and. I'm gonna put my eyes like right here. I'm just gonna draw those right on. Then I'm gonna do two lines vertically. So I'm gonna see like kind of where my eye is and I'm gonna go down and just put like a little mark there. And hope that they're pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna take my piece of tape again. I'm just gonna kind of use it as a guide. And then I'm gonna put one next to it right about here so it's a little fidgety doing that part and when you start out and do your first one you know use a stone that's chipped don't use perfect good ones for practice you always want to practice with you know practice material <laughs> so now we are ready to start our carving there we go all right so I'm gonna pull this down a little bit and then I'm going to just start carving. Now, 
it's gonna make some dust. So we have water, you know, and we have this damp paper towel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna carve and then I'm gonna dip this paper towel. It's already damp, but I'm gonna dip it in that water and then I can wipe it and that will help keep the dust down. And I'm gonna work a little bit at a time. Now the more you go over it, the wider it'll get and the deeper it'll get. So when I first do it, I'm going to just kind of like put guidelines in and then I will go over and deepen it as I need to. All right, so here's what I have so far. I can't use, as you saw when I was doing it, I kind of like went outside of the line, but I just continued that. I didn't want to like stop and redo it, but now I'm going to go over it again. Okay, I was considering doing a second line across the top, but I'm not going to. So yeah, another thing I wanna say is you should wear safety glasses and a dust mask when you're doing this because it does produce some dust. You don't wanna breathe that in. So here is our scarab. Now you can see there's still some of the marker on there. I can probably rub that off. There it goes. Now once it dries, in just a second, there it goes, you'll see that ground away portion that, you know, it'll make the design stick out more. But another thing that you can do is you can put something in the recessed areas, either some paint or a you know marker or anything like that that will you know stay in those recessed areas and make it kind of like a patina just in those spots. Now we can use like the sharpie marker for that. So I could just go like kind of put the eyes in there, right? 
and then just kind of trace over this as best as I can. And then we'll wipe it afterward. But I just want to get that ink in there. Let it dry for a couple seconds. And then I can wipe over, get some of that extra off of there. And it'll look cool, trust me. One thing I learned when making this, and I did it again today, is you want to try to do like long, smooth passes with the tool and not like short jerky little lines and when you do that you're lifting the tool up when you're making short lines and you kind of lose your space or your place and I did that once or twice I kind of went out of the the line a little bit where I was but you know I'm doing this for fun and making mistakes is okay that's how we learn right so now I'm just going to trace over these last two and also like Sometimes these are like hard to hold, like it was slipping out of my fingers. I don't know if you could see that. And also like, it's easy to do like the one side, but then doing the other side, like turning the stone, it's like kind of like my hand was in my own way, you know? So it does take some practice. And I think if I made like a whole bunch of these, I'd probably get like really good at it. Well, anybody would, you know, when you do something over and over and over again. So let's do this line. And I kind of don't know if I went off the line there or not. And then for the other side, I'm going to go over this. And, you know, it looks kind of hoofy to leave that marker on there like that. So I'm going to try to wipe some of that away. Let it dry in the crevices for a minute. And then I'm just going to try to wipe some off. So you'll see it here and there. And, you know, if you don't like the way it gets, you can just redo it little bit of like acetone or fingernail polish remover but that's really cool I really like it a lot so let me take a dry paper towel and wipe that off so scrub on a little bit more get some of that black off a little bit there we go that's the look I'm looking for all right so yeah you could see on my towel it did take some of that off and there's our scarab I think it's really cool. Oops, there we go. I think it's really cool. I'm super happy with it. And guess what? You can turn these into soldered jewelry. So I'm going to do another one really quick. Not too bad. There I am with my little choppy strokes that I'm so used to doing. Sorry, I keep bumping this. And then I do have to kind of look at it from the top. All right, cool, pretty cool. And then I'll draw a guideline on for the head as well. I'll try for a second. Just a little bit of a zoop and a zoop, like a little U. I can move those eyes down a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Pretty cool. I goofed up a couple little spots on it, but that's okay. It still looks really cool. And I'm not gonna put any black in this one. You can see I just blew on it and it dried it. And that has a great contrast. All right, so let's inspect our handiwork. Here's the one that I had made previously and that I put some paint in there. I love green and turquoise. <laughs> and here's the one that we did just now. And I put some black marker in there to bring out the detail. And then here's one that I whipped together at the last second. And you know what? I did make a couple little goof ups on this. There's, you know, you could see where I, I went off the, you know, off the stone. And this one I'm not putting anything in. I think it, it looks cool just, you know, that you can see the 
the ground away part. But what I can do to correct that is either I can get my grinder again, my tool, and I can grind some kind of like a design in that and like follow it and then do on the other side, but I don't feel like doing that right now. So <laughs> I'm gonna just go over that part with some marker where I kind of goofed it a little bit there and there, and that's it. And then what I'll do is that is going to dry in some of that white ground away part because that's unpolished, you know? And then I'm just gonna kind of wipe it a little bit. Just a little bit. And there, looks a little bit better. That's gonna dry in a second and I blow on it. There it goes. So yeah, I kind of fixed that up pretty quick. So these are great, great for jewelry making. I think they're awesome. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think of these. And if you like scarabs, do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you know what they are? Um, they're beetles. So yeah, you should try it at home. It was actually really fun. It, it, there's a little bit of a learning curve. You know, it is kind of hard to hold this kind of stone. You can use this kind of tool and you can grind like any kind of stone. Now, if you know anything about gems and geology and st stones and rocks and all that, you'll know that each stone has a different kind of hardness. That's called the Mohs scale of hardness. Some stones are soft, like pearls, which isn't really a stone. <laughs> it's a natural element. It's a natural, you know, material, but um, some stones are very soft, like talc. And then stones get very hard, as we all know the diamond, right? But each stone of hardness is assigned a number of hardness. Each different type of stone is assigned a level of hardness. So if you look on, just go on the internet and search the Mohs, M-O-H-S, scale of hardness, and or search rocks hardness, and you'll find which ones are easier to, you know, engrave and which ones are harder. You can just try it. And, you know, I highly recommend it. This is a lot of fun. And... I'm gonna use these in some projects, so maybe we'll do one for the YouTube channel, so we'll see. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this project. I thought it was a lot of fun. You can solder these, you can surround them with, you know, a solderable material and turn them into jewelry. Maybe you have a different idea. Uh, leave a comment below because you can share with everyone and I love sharing. I hope you have a great weekend and thanks again and I will be back very soon and you know it's so nice to be done with that book. I do have another one that I'll be starting on very soon but I missed creating videos and I want to try to keep up with that. One last thing I wanted to mention is my Pasanki course is now available through my channel membership. Now that course usually is about $200, but the channel membership is $25. It is per month. You can join for a month and watch the videos and then and cancel the membership if you like. I will eventually be putting more workshops on there, more behind the scenes photos, sneak peeks at my new books and all that stuff. But it's the time of year right now to get started with those Pasanki, those Ukrainian Easter eggs. I have a wonderful course, step-by-step. Step. Again, it retails for about $200, but anyway, it's free for when you join the ch channel membership, which is a $25 level. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that, and I hope you join me because it's a lot of fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.